In the last couple of videos, we went over how to build our JavaScript and include ES6 in the mix so that we can do some of the latest JavaScript things uh, in a side of our projects and being able to do React. In this video, we're going to start going over actually doing a basic React app. Now, this tutorial isn't an in depth look at React and how to do React. I recommend checking out other sources for that. The one that I like specifically is by Wes Boss. It is React for Beginners. It's actually how I got started learning React. So with that out of the way, let's actually get started in working on getting React running with our current setup. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to do some installation of components. So we're going to do an NPMI and save React, React DOM, and React Router. In our basic Hello World app that we're going to build in React, we're going to use React, and it has a whole bunch of components for literally making React components. We're going to use React DOM library to be able to interact with the DOM, and React also has kind of a virtual DOM that it uses, and that's where that comes in. And then React Router is to be able to do URL routing. These are the three basic React things that most everyone uses. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the preset for React so we can do JSX and we're going to need to install the Babel preset for React. Go ahead and open up our .babel RC file. If you remember from the last episode, this is where we do our presets for Babel. JSX was actually built into Babel, so to configure our build system to understand JSX, then we need to add React to our presets here. And so now with adding React to this array, we're ready to start using JSX in our build system. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and open up our index.js file. Let's go ahead and remove all the stuff that we had previously, and we'll start by doing some imports. And if you'll notice, we're doing ES6 imports. So we're gonna do import React from React. So this gives us our React object that we can do stuff with. We're going to import just render from our React DOM so that we can render out our stuff to the page. Then we're going to import router, route, and browser history from React Router. Router is going to set up a general router for our system to use. Route is going to be the individual route that we're going to set up. And then browser history is there for keeping track of browser history so you can hit the back and forward button. Let's go ahead and make our first component. We're going to do const to main page. We're going to do react.create class. So this is going to create a React class for us to use. It's going to take an object. Inside of that object, we're going to create a render property. And this is going to use the new ES6 functionality of if you create render like this, and it's going to create a key and a value and the value be the function called render. Every single React class is gonna have a render. That's kind of how you output things. React is basically there for your view layer, so however you get data to it, however you do whatever you do, it all comes out in the render. So here we're just going to return a div, and that div is just gonna say, hello, I am a React app. And this is where JSX gets involved. If you notice, we're integrating HTML inside of our JavaScript. We don't have it like quoted in anything. You will note that we have a return open parentheses and a close parentheses around it. This is to note that there's going to be several lines potentially of HTML that's going to be returned. Babel is going to read this in. It's going to say, hey, this is JSX. Boom, I'm going to translate this as I need to. So now we're gonna set up our routers. We're gonna do const routes equals, and then we're going to create a router. Then we're gonna set the history to browser history. Then we're gonna close our router and set a route. It's gonna be the path of slash, so it's gonna be our index, and we're gonna use the component of our main page. So what this is gonna do is it's going to say, hey, for slash, we're going to use the main page class that we created earlier and it's going to execute that code. Finally, we need a render function from our React DOM from above. We're gonna say, hey, use routes, and then that's going to go the next step and say, okay, we're in routes, check the URL, or we're in slash. Okay, go over to main page and execute main page. And then once it executes main page, it's going to attach it to the main element on the page. In this case, we're doing a document.get element by ID with main. 
And so it's, we need some sort of DOM object. In this case, we're going to create a div here in a little bit with an ID of main. And so it'll just render out the div hello, I am a React app here in a little bit. And so this is really a basic React app that will actually work and it'll actually run. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and build our project. So we're going to do npm run build, and it's going to take a little bit. And if you'll notice, it is 917 kilobytes, and there's 235 hidden modules. It's a lot. Basically, it's used Webpack to do exactly what Webpack is supposed to do. It's inspected what needs to be used. It's gone out to the different libraries and looked at all their imports and all that stuff, made a tree diagram. You know, did a lot of fun stuff and then dumped it all into a single file called index.js and is using just the components that it needs. And it just so happens that index.js file is now 917 kilobytes. So that means it's almost one meg for our hello world, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially once we minify it, it'll be a lot smaller. But now we know that we have the full power of everything. And we also know, as we previously showed with Webpack, that it only has the components that it needs. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and create our index.html file for us to use to be able to browse it. Just add some basic HTML. And the important part is to add our div with an ID of main. This is where our React app is going to attach. And then the next line we're going to add is a script. And we're going to do source build slash index.js. Since build is the actual folder that we're going to put our index.js file in with our build system. And there we go, that's all we need for our HTML. So now we have our React Java, we have our React JavaScript where we imported a few things, created a main page component, we created a couple of routes, and then told React to render that information to our main div that we have here. So now we're going to install one final thing. We're going to install a Webpack dev server. So do npm i webpack dev server. Since that's installed now, let's go ahead and run it with node modules .bin webpack dev server. And it's going to do a build and start everything up on port 8080. If we jump over to our browser, we can open up port 8080 on localhost. And there we go. We have hello world. I am a React app. So we've successfully created a React app from scratch and used Webpack to build it and loaded it up. We can further verify that this is a React app by opening up our dev tools. I have the React extension installed in Firefox. So if we'll take a look at that, open up our console and go over to the React tab. And here we go. We have router as our top level component. We'll expand it. We have router context and open that. And we have main page. And inside of that, you see we have the div of our hello world. So that kind of is further verification that our React app is running and everything is hunky dory. So with that, we are successful with running a React app with JavaScript and building it with Webpack. Join us next time as we start adding Redux to React and start dealing with a little bit of data.